Mmm, candy. Stupid machines. Why don't these ever seem to work? I'm only willing to take... Uh, it's, it's only a question. So while the folks over at Valve were working their technomancy and willing the Source engine into existence starting in 1999, Valve did the impossible to fill time, bringing in mod developer, TF Software LTD, and Canadian developer Min Goosebumps Lee to expand their reach of the industry, creating the first official retail releases of Team Fortress Classic in April 1999 and Counter-Strike the following year, both originally Quake mods whose teams were approached by Valve to officially produce their mods as retail games on their Gold Source engine, which was already made from the Quake engine. And as easy as that, two community-grown mods reeking with promise and potential were now properties of the Big V. But what about Valve's golden child, Half-Life? Even if Valve didn't know that their planned sequel wouldn't release for another five years, they'd need something to grow and expand the intriguing universe Valve had created. And with how big of a hit the game was, they weren't short of developers to choose from who were itching to capitalize on this crowbar craze. But their pick was a bit of a surprising one. Gearbox Software, an at the time blossoming studio born from former 3D Realm staff with experience dating back to Duke Nukem 3D, Quake, Quake's Scourge of Armagon expansion, and even a former programmer for NASA. They were brought on to breathe new life into the Half-Life universe with Valve's blessing, headed by... Someone not important is what I wish I could say. Look, I'm not a fan of Randy Pitchford and would be completely happy if I didn't even need to acknowledge his existence for the rest of my life. But the unfortunate truth is that he contributed a lot to the early FPS industry and a lot of beloved franchises we remember fondly today. These IPs wouldn't exist without Pitchford when he's not loading company secrets and- <laughs> onto USB flash drives he leaves at his favorite festivals. I'm thinking about taking a note from Minecraft and say that Hatsune Miku invented Gearbox, but I think I'll just take a note from Zivi for now and use various terms for Grease until he hits me with a season and desist, or until Randall does. It should also be noted that Gearbox was formed from failed studio rebel Boat Rocker, who was working under EA to develop Prax Wars 2018, which was scrapped after a year and a half of development after EA lost interest and dissolved the company. Now, a year and a half of dev time is quite a bit for a PC game in the late 90s. But that said, this overambitious choose-your-own-adventure FPS game never saw the light of day, and I'll admit, the game doesn't look too interesting from the screenshots that I've seen. But hey, as long as the team working on it gained some good experiences and put that into future titles, uh... But yes, Half-Life Opposing Force, developed by Gearbox and released exactly one year after the original game's release, boasting everything you'd expect from an expansion like this. New levels, new enemies, new weapons, but since it's Half-Life after all, that means a new story as well, opting to tell the story of an HECU Corporal Adrian Shepard from an opposing side of the Black Mesa incident. Well, kind of. The protagonist is never told why they're here or why Gordon Freeman is a target of interest, but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. One of the goals of Grungo Greaseman was to expand on the Half-Life universe while still preserving the feel of the original lore, and I think that they did a pretty good job at it. A lot of these new enemies now belong to the new Race X, and that's just what we needed, right? Another video game identity called X? They're sort of just there. Their presence is never really expanded on in-game. The closest you get to this is from the official strategy guide, explaining that they plan to terraform Earth into their own. But their discovery of Earth is never explained, so it's safe to assume that the Resonance Cascade caused such a massive rift in the fabric of reality that it caught the attention of this interdimensional imperialist force that wasn't even involved in Zen, at least we think. Put a pin in that idea for later, we're gonna hear about a faction very similar to this as we move on through the Half-Life universe. While they linger around Black Mesa throughout the game, they don't come out fully until after Gordon has left Earth to fight the Nihilanth. So perhaps they saw Gordon was gone and decided to make their move, or maybe it was the death of the Nihilanth that brought him over? I don't know, and it's never really explained. Now, this is a game that I am very mixed on personally. I think the expansion is objectively good, and it's a genuinely great time with some strong level design and fun weapons, but I didn't really like this game as a kid, and purely because my expectations were just way too high, so take this as a cautionary tale. I remember drooling over the idea of owning this game back in high school. The idea of a Half-Life adventure taking place through the HECU's perspective sounded incredible, and my mind went wild with the possibilities of it. But me being in a poor family and unable to take on a job of my own to make some money, it would be months before I eventually owned the game. And those expectations of what Half-Life Opposing Force offered ran amok, and ultimately ruined the experience for me. And before you say I was being childish, 
yes, I was. I was a kid. I have since come around on the game, kind of. I still have my issues with it, even though I think that it is a genuinely fun time. I'd still rank its replayability, though, below Half-Life 2 Episode 1 personally, but that's because of my own lingering biases that I'm trying my best to address in the most mature way possible. I think around the end game when the Race X troopers come out in full force, it's just not that fun for me. Look, there's a correlation between my enjoyment of Op 4 and the amount of Race X monsters on screen at the same time, but we'll get there. Right, well, time to boot the game up and... What is this? I feel bad for any Zoomers who started this game up and thought it was a multiplayer milsim because of the Capture the Flag title screen. This was pushed after an update in 2000 to add a Capture the Flag mode to multiplayer. Yeah, a post-launch multiplayer update for Half-Life. Ain't that wild. Like every other Half-Life game, we're gonna start with the Hazard Course, or Boot Camp. Yeah, that's thematic. Yeah, video games let us live out our wildest fantasies, like junior ROTC kids getting yelled at by a drill instructor. It's okay though, their favorite movie is Full Metal Jacket and their favorite parts are the war scenes. Speaking of- Seems your name was mysteriously bumped to the top of the advanced training list. That is some very crispy audio. So we play as Adrian Shepard, a 22-year-old US Marine who's been drafted into the Hazardous Environmental Combat Unit, or HECU, in just another day in boot camp. And oh boy, if only he knew what this was setting him up for. Holy cow, you know what comes from Texas, don't you? Oh wait, I know this one. Politicians who escaped to Cancun during a crisis? Oh wait, I guess he's from Canada. I don't know, I figured that was a better answer than gay people. Don't get mad at me if you haven't seen it. That's another Full Metal Jacket reference. Credit where it's due, this boot camp is full of personality. From recruits doing push-ups in front of their drill sarge to a mysterious man in a two-piece suit staring at me from the window. It's like I never left. Mounted on the wall below me, you will see a PCB. This is a powered combat vest. Use it correctly and I guarantee it will save your life! So Adrian is equipped with a PCV suit. This ain't no HEV suit, though. Actually, it kind of is, even being compatible with HEV batteries and suit recharge stations. Boy, ain't that convenient. Black Mesa is also a military contractor, prove me fucking wrong. The PCV suit is practically identical to the HEV suit from a gameplay perspective, with one major flaw. <laughs> The night vision. So in classic Gold Source Half-Life, the flashlight effect was made by slapping a sphere into the closest surface within the player's crosshair, making it transparent and illuminating the surfaces that it's covering. Here, instead of projecting that sphere onto a surface from the crosshair, it's placed right onto the player model. Which is fine if it weren't for the annoying green overlay. I don't like this, I get that it's supposed to be night vision, but if I'm being honest, I would complain a lot more if it was used more than three times in the campaign. I need this night vision like I need a bullet in the sternum. Hey, well that's nice. How does this shit work? Electromagnets? Why do the bullets drain my suit battery? I never really thought about that till now. Welcome to the Marines, kids, where we shoot, burn, electrocute, and expose you to toxic radiation to help you build character. We'll see you in 20 years from now for chemotherapy, assuming you're not stuck in cosmic limbo. Look, Adrian, ropes! <laughs> They don't fucking work half the time. Every time I jump onto one of these things, I feel like I'm about to get flung into a parallel universe. We don't have to deal with many of these in the campaign though, thankfully. Just think of them as a dynamic ladder. A ladder that doesn't work at a higher frame rate. But hey, once you're done scaling some strings, you get a sample of our newest beloved child of the Half-Life universe. Your weapon is your best friend. The Desert Eagle. Take the Glock's regular fire and alt fire properties of accuracy and slow, or spray and pray, and apply it to the revolver, now instead toggled via laser sight. This thing is just a a better revolver, a better handheld sniper, and will become our go-to weapon for a lot of the campaign. And speaking of snipers, pick up the sniper rifle and position yourself on the firing line. All right, this is false advertising because I'm not immune to everything except for grenades. Yeah, hey Brandy, I don't think that this is how scopes work. Whatever, maybe it's because of my monitor size and the lack of a scaling HUD. It's a great weapon. It's the crossbow from Half-Life One, but hit scan. But don't get too attached because we don't get to use this thing until late into the campaign. And while we're on the subject of attachment, you must familiarize yourself with the skill set of each soldier in your platoon. The first type of soldier you will meet is the engineer. Being a corporal in the Marines, Adrian will have support from his fellow troops, summoned to him by a radio, an asset already found in the OG game, now given a purpose. The engineer is able to break down select doors as he welds them down with his own lung cancer stick. That's pretty badass. The medic is, as you'd expect, a walking med station, doing something that scientists were already able to do in giving you health by holding the interact key on them, but these guys heal you way more than they did. And of course, the soldiers who fight alongside Adrian, essentially being beefier Barneys from a gameplay standpoint. All right, that does it for boot camp. Now who's ready to see some real action? Okay, go seven. We're seeing the sector one, one, two LZ and one. <laughs> 
And if you look into the rightmost window, you'll see surface tension from the hit 1998 game Half Man Life. Adrian's adventure begins well after the resonance cascade, as he and his fellow HECU grunts are flown in to clean up the mess. Though, as you'll soon find out, his team hasn't even been informed of the Black Mesa incident and is in for a rude awakening when his osprey is shot down by a Zen Manta. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Is that a baby shambler? Oh, thank you for dragging me to cover, my friend. Get down! Oh! oh! That must have been painful for him to only play half of his death scream. Adrian is dragged into the facility of Black Mesa, where Einstein was nice enough to try to revive us with his luscious CPR abilities. Sadly, the same can't be said for our colleagues who look very dead. I think I saw a radio near the crash site where I found you. Perhaps you can go there and radio for help? Yeah, sure, that doesn't sound too bad. I know how to use those, I think. Ah, I remember my first time on the stretcher. Look at him, he's loving it. Have you ever seen such a magnificent species? These crabs can completely control their host's nervous system. Can you imagine what the next stage of mutation looks like? Oh, what, you think this is just the beginning? Alright, I bet you five cans of compressed air that it's still a wimp. Thanks for saving my PCV suit and not stealing it to give to a LARPing event. What was I doing again? Oh, oh. oh get up, you're fine. Ugh. Hey look everybody, it's Otis making his first appearance in the Half-Life universe without any facial hair. This looks so wrong, I hate it. Where is your lip caterpillar? Okay, Shepard, I see you found your power vest. How does he know I would have come here with it? Drill Instructor Barnes, are you in there? This prank is going on a little too long. My mom is gonna worry when I don't make it home tonight. Bro, I think you have bigger problems than what your mom is gonna think about this. Black Mesa back at it again with leaving dangerous, life-threatening machines out in the open like this. I'd complain, but I'd be beating a dead Vortigon. I feel like I'm supposed to have something around here. What did I miss? Hey, now no one told me that this was gonna be an immersive sim. How close was this to System Shock 2 again? Much like Magic 8-Ball Simulator, wrenches solve all of our problems. Our first melee weapon, a slower, stronger crowbar with a secondary charge that can jib zombies in a single blow. Good for enemies without ranged attacks, and definitely my melee weapon of choice for Shepard. Hey, remember where our friend only played half of his death screen? Yeah, that's where we find our second melee weapon. Yes, we get more than one melee weapon for Op 4. The combat knife. Not too special on its own, but I mean that in a good way. It feels like a reskinned crowbar meant to fit the aesthetic that Op 4 was going for. Probably there to make sure that classic fans don't feel too alienated by the wrench. And I mean, it worked. In my first playthrough of Op 4 about a decade ago, I always chose the knife over the wrench. It felt familiar, but as you play the game more, you start to wean away from the knife and closer to the wrench. At least for me. Now Otis, don't touch that fence. You dunce. This is a classic Half-Life puzzle, crawling through these vents to turn the electricity off so you can leave the puzzle without having to circle back around. That's pretty nice. And for our troubles, we're rewarded with a Desert Eagle and some Vorts to try them on. Poor bastards couldn't even see that coming with their 60 eyes. Shepard activates the radio, confirming this moment's location in canon. The Zen invasion has fallen out of control and the HECU has begun pulling out, and Shepard is to move through Black Mesa's tram system to head to the surface. Hey, did you miss the barnacles? Yeah, I got nothing. Kind of a weird spot to give me the shotgun since all of these vorts are out of shotgun range. Whatever, it's the Half-Life shotgun and I'll never be unhappy to have it. Hey, remember Level Lord's massive taint taser from Scourge of Armagon? This isn't even his final form. I'm going to piss in your sink. That's okay though, G-Man is here to save us. It's weird, I don't think we've ever seen him interact with the environment like this to help the player. I guess Shepard is special like that. Alright, I know that we're told to trek through the tram system, so I shouldn't be surprised, but man, I love this new perspective that Op 4 gives us with the tram. It's so cathartic being able to walk around and actively interact with something previously reserved for a scripted sequence. And even these new areas it pulls you into are great, and I'm not just saying that because of the Beetlebots. Be free, my friend. Ignore anything negative I might say about this game, this game is perfect. Hello my beautiful babies, I missed you so much. Yep, it's not Half-Life without a train segment, I'll tell you that much. It's also not a Half-Life game without something breaking. What's wrong with my guns? God damn it! This train is... 
Sector C. Shodan, is that you? Oh god, don't tell me it was the wrench that I found. I do really love this set piece. A really nice twist on the Half-Life train trope. That's not exactly a thing yet, because this is technically only the second single-player Half-Life game, but you know what I mean. The explosions going off, the Shodan style bugging out on the intercom, it's just such a good moment. Never mind, I take it back. Otis, can I borrow your likeness for a few minutes? Oh god, please stop feeding into the stereotype. You're not doing me any favors. Oh yeah, baby. That's more like it. I'm starting to think the Deagle should have been standard issue for the Barneys, too. What is that, Doc? I don't no, speak of the devil. I can take it. Uh, just a little damage, but I can make it. Uh, Are Barneys just predisposed to have absolutely no emotion in their line delivery? I don't want to die! Oh hey, that guy's new. I'm just saying, if Black Mesa gave him a Deagle instead of a Glock, maybe he could have done something. Those poor bastards. Otis, please, they're already dead. You don't need to murder them again. So if we keep Otis alive, he leads us to a closet with SMG grenades. This would be great if I had an SMG by now, but... Oh no. You're one of the... them. Sir, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Hey, wanna see something cool? Cool, right? Don't be afraid. It smells worse than a chili cooker. Otis, what the fuck does that mean? All right, I wanted to take Otis with me, but he's a. Uh, what was in that chili? Finally, my colleagues. Oh, yeah, okay. You want to see some weird shit? Yeah, using the HEV charger as a mandatory platform for progression. Oh, that's so weird to me, and it's the only case of this in the entire franchise, if I'm not mistaken. Hey guys, I made it. Thank you for not leaving without me. Come in, Cooper. Do you copy? Forget about They're abandoned on the base. If you have any last bomb targets, mark them on the tactical map. Otherwise, get the hell out of there. Oh yeah, I'm sure that this Freeman guy won't take advantage of that to kill some big fucking- Shepard, you've made it. I take it you didn't find Freeman? I don't know who that is. You've got to believe me. Freeman could be anywhere. I'm not letting ah! you go until you talk. Yeah, okay, man. That's none of my business, I guess. Can I have those batteries behind you, though? This is my post, sir. Man, if you want something right, you gotta do it yourself. All right, man, please. I'm, I'm sorry. Just stop doing that. Okay, boys, I'm here. Oh, fuck me, dude, and fuck you and your stupid-ass tie, Gerald, man. Guess I gotta find another way out of here. Boy, this sure is quite the office complex you've got here. What is it with you guys and putting giant turbines next to your workspaces? I don't get it. If I ever had to do this in real life, I think I'd need my red pants. What? Why are these combustion engines here out in the open? The administrator must have been a big fan of Bowser's castle. Are you supposed to be a hammer brother? Hey, Doc, I found that mutation you mentioned. I'm more surprised that that belt around his waist hasn't snapped yet. What is that, aperture tech? Yeah, Adrian, just hold right-click with your wrench out. What's the worst that could happen? I found the SMG. Yeah, let's just push this pack of explosives into the path of the fire. What could possibly go wrong? We got to get out of here. Listen to me, Shepard. Those things, they'll kill all of us. Ugh. No, it's about time. Hey, how are you throwing your voice like that? Oh, I don't like that sound. Pit drones, our first new original Race X enemy type. Fast, but fragile. Just spray and pray until you're more confident in your aim so you can deck them with a single shotgun shell. Though they usually hunt in packs, so maybe it is better to just spray and pray when they're all huddled up. If you're too close, they'll run up and try to melee you, but when you're outside of that range, they'll fire spikes at you that are pretty easy to strafe around. Yeah, you see those red things on the front of them? Those aren't their eyes, those are spike pores. Gross. I don't really have much else to say about them. They're kind of easy. Uh, they're the only gold source half life enemy that has a backwards walking animation, so that- that's something. Hey Doc, have you seen my rocket launcher? I got next day shipping on that fucker. There it is. I don't know where you soldiers under orders to silence the facility or these vile aliens. Why do all of these scientists hate me? Literally no one has told me what's going on here. This puzzle where you need to run around this obstacle course to turn off the power so you can use this elevator cable as a rope to climb up is pretty cool. Certainly a memorable puzzle for me. Oh, uh, let's see, what else? Remember the companion cube from Portal?
The companion cube sucks when I can't pick it up. It's not a hard puzzle, I just have a negative association with it because I was stuck on this puzzle for way too long when I was a kid and always dreaded coming back to it, even when I already know what to do. Does anyone else have moments like that in games? Look, Coomer, ropes! Just a friendly reminder that Gold Source doesn't have ragdoll physics and those flailing limbs are all animated with keyframes. Or they're baked in from a simulation, I don't know. This rope could have at least been a bit lower so I can see it. Even on repeat playthroughs, I would miss this rope because nothing made me think to look up. I just shut the power off. I thought I would need to backtrack. Whatever. Hey, you can't tell me what to do. I'm a corporal. Ow. Ah, my boys. Now I can use you to open this door for me. Only take a minute. Great job, boys. Now let's get a move on. Or, okay, maybe not. I guess he's not following me. There we go. Come on. Oh my god, it's like I'm running a daycare. Come on, just a little bit more. Oh my god, finally. Ah, that must be the thing that the emotionless Barney was talking about. Have you seen the new IG-88? Gee, that sure looks like a big fucking thing. I wonder where that could- Oh, never mind. It's over here. It literally says BFG on the door. Ah, that must be Gordon Freeman. Boy, he sure looks like an upstanding citizen. I wonder if he knows he won Employee of the Month reward when he's being shot. Shepard, what the hell were you doing down there? Oh man, you should have seen it. It's like Bowser's castle down there once you get past the Hammer Brothers. Where's an engineer when you need one? Oh, I'm sure he can't be that far away. Hello, my friends. Have you seen an engineer around these parts? All right, violence it is. The Black Ops, reskinned, hostile HECU grunts serving as our human antagonists for Op 4. Yes, a cleanup crew for the cleanup crew. Given another decade or so and we'll hear the stories of whoever has to clean these guys up. Hey, that's pretty cool. I've got one of those too. Ah, there's my engineer. Get up, buddy. We found a job for you. Corporal, I don't think I'm gonna make it. I need a medic. Back. Oh, that's convenient. I bet you two have been waiting for each other for a long time. It's for you. I've beaten this game more times than I'd like to admit, and I never knew that you could do damage to this thing. Uh-oh. Hey, what branch of the military is it that eats crayons? I think they use their nutritious snack to write this. You ever just stand in front of someone who's critically injured just to flex on them? Who needs a locksmith? I hate to break it to you, but I think lockpicking lawyer could get that open before you could even melt it down. God damn it, that medic used the last of his good shit to save your ass. Look at him, he's so mad he's shaking. Ooh, nice gun. <laughs> Gun. Ooh, nice gun you've got there, Marine. Now, I'm not the kind of guy to kill an NPC to take their gun to get it early, but that doesn't mean that I'll... Thank you. Say hello to one of the best weapons in the game. This thing's DPS is practically unmatched, at the cost of some semi-scarce ammo, and being so powerful that it pushes you backwards when fired. Holy shit, a PCV charging station. And here I thought they were only gonna be shown in boot camp for the sake of world building, which I would have been fine with. Hey, do you guys remember On a Rail? I said, do you guys remember On a Rail? It's ready. You must go, now! Oh, that sounds important. I hope that's not for me. Sir, I wanted to call you to remind you about your suit's extended warranty. Oh, that doesn't look good. You! Colonel, I've created a time paradox. <laughs> oh, please tell me this portal won't lead me to my death. Whoa, hey, wait a minute. Why is this area purple? All right, point taken. I won't look a gift X in the mouth. You know, I had a friend ask me after he beat the game where you get the displacement cannon because he somehow missed it. And to this day, I still wondered, how did you miss this? Now, how's this thing work? Ah, uh, it's just like I remember boot camp. Complete with this weirdo with ping pong balls on his eyes. Aren't you supposed to do that under red light? Oh, why do I take full damage in a low gravity area? Oh my god, this really bothers me. All right, so if you make it to the top of this anti-zen, Adrian makes it to a previously unseen branch of Black Mesa, fitting with a chapter named Crush Depth, a physics term for when underwater pressure begins compressing an object. Something like that. Anyways, this Amokus cosplayer is trapped underwater. Yeah, I'll save you, bro. Don't worry. Thank you for releasing me. I can help you access any secured area in this lab. Well, there goes our grant money. Yeah, okay, dude, nice priorities. Can your grant money fix this door for me? 
Ah, oh, fuck. I'm sorry about that. That was harsh. Cool teleporter sequence. I love how parts of the lab are teleported away before Adrian is finally teleported himself. Now, if only there was something big for me to use this BFG on. Come on out, my children. Do not be afraid. Oh right, this is a displacement cannon. It's pretty obviously a reference to the BFG from Doom, and I guess in that aspect, it's sort of like a G-rated BFG. Instead of microwaving its victims from the inside out, it just portals them to and from the border world. Using it to teleport myself to and from the border world is actually this thing's alt fire. It's fun. From this point on, every map has its real world and zen variant that it teleports you to. It depends on the map that you're on, and a lot of those maps can have healing pawns inside of them. I ended up using the displacement cannon a lot simply to heal myself when I was playing on hard mode, which I, I don't recommend by the way, it's not fun. Hey, remember questionable ethics when we learned Black Mesa had been fucking around in Zen for a while? Op 4 expands on that, showing a larger scale environment for these Zen creatures, which we first discover after meeting... The Shock Troopers, foot soldiers for the Race X who have now come out to play now that Earth is ripe for the taking since its crowbar-wielding savior is out of the picture. I fucking hate these guys. Imagine the Zen Grunts but with alien grenades that they barf up into their own hands. You know, last time I did that I was called a freak and kicked out of Wells Fargo. Speaking of... Thank you for the roach, good sir. Like the Zen Grunts, the Shock Troopers are aided by a living weapon with regenerating ammo, which our protagonist can use to his advantage. This time, literally jumping into our arms. I don't know if I'd say that it's better than the Hive Hand from Half-Life 1, purely because the homing bees makes it kind of unique. That said though, this does become my go-to weapon for clearing out head crabs, barnacles, and even boxes for some loot. Can I, can I have that please? Oh, that's a big boy. Oh my god, finally. The Voltagors, a hideous, hulking mass of flesh that bears a strange resemblance to the antlion guards from Half-Life 2, except this one's got a ranged attack, so actually no, I think this one's more boring to fight. Not much really to say about these guys. They're big, they're spongy, they run at you, they shoot pink lightning at you, and explode when they die. They're just sort of there. If it weren't for a memorable set piece later on, I'd say that these guys were completely forgettable. Hey there, you little bastard. What are you doing on the floor? Did Papa abandon you? Yeah, I've been there too. The Spore Launcher, a larva of the Shock Trooper. Yes, this thing grows up to become that thing. And because of that, it... <laughs> Oh, it's okay, little guy. Eat up so you can become big and strong. I don't know if this thing is better or worse than the RPG, but it has an alt fire that lobs a grenade like the SMG alt fire, except they bounce. Yeah, I barely use this thing, but it's got some nice splash damage and ammo for it infinitely respawns from these little grapple hook point things. So I guess it's supposed to be a bit of a diet rocket launcher. Oh, that's right. I never told you why I hate the shock troopers. They're spongy, they're assholes, they're relentless, and they're the reason why I only had the patience to beat Op 4 once on hard mode. You need to be sure you're close to cover with these guys or real far away because their shock roach projectiles are so fast that you can't strafe them at mid-range. After a while it just becomes obnoxious and I don't enjoy fighting them. Hey did this Gordon guy get his own Navi to guide him around? That's right I didn't think so. Let's see what I'm supposed to hey listen to. Ah uh, yes Walter, we were finally able to successfully detach one of the barnacle creatures from its point of gestation. As before we were still only able to coerce the creature into latching onto organic material. Oh, baby, don't tell me. Oh, hello, beautiful. Here it is, the penultimate weapon for Op 4. One of the biggest reasons I was so excited to play this expansion as a kid and frequented the Half-Life wiki on my school computers just to read about it. It sucks. It only works on organic surfaces, so if you're using it for traversal, you can only use it when the game says you can. And okay, I know that Doom Eternal's meat hook is basically the exact same, pulling you into select points or pulling you towards the enemy. And yeah, on paper it sounds great, but you have very little control over the path that you follow with this grapple. You can't deal damage with it until you're point blank, and you can't do anything with it until you let go. You can let go of Mouse 1 midway through to air strafe out of the way, and that's that's kind of fun. You even use it a couple times during the final boss, but it rarely helps, and I only ended up using it when I needed to. Yeah, this personal disappointment is one of the reasons I disliked Op 4 for a while. I don't hate the game today like I used to, but I'd rather play Blue Shift still. Okay, why do you guys have tentacles in this lab? Is it because this next area is a callback to- Oh fuck. Oh, finally a radio. Hey chief, I could really use some men over here for backup. Hey, 
So no men? Hey Doc, I think I found that worm thing you were talking about. Why does it make bird noises? Yeah, welcome to Op 4's blast pit. Imagine if the tentacles could fire beams of toxic soup at you. That's the pit worm. You can only kill it once you activate a valve and a gearbox. Yep, that, that sure is a box of gears. Damn, those could really use some grease. That That's not what I meant. You finally kill it after activating both of these and... Okay, it was nice that I needed to use the grapple hook at one point, but that, that's all I can really say. Foxtrot Uniform. Oh, wait, I get it, because it stands for- Hey man, good to see you. Friends Unit. Hey, remember the nuke section from Half-Life 1 where if you trigger a mine, the whole facility goes up in a crater? This firefight with the Black Ops is a lot like that, except not quite as bad. I don't need to tell you again why this thing is so great, but I'm going to anyways. I fucking love the sniper rifle. Because it's a Half-Life game and your aim isn't hindered by movement, you can use this thing as a railgun, and any body shot on a human target will take him out on normal difficulty anyway. It just feels so good, and oh man, that sound. Oh, that's the good stuff. Oh boy, I love dark and scary sewers. I sure hope no big-ass bastard comes in and... Yeah, okay, karma's a bitch. Oh man, this room used to cause me so much trouble as a kid. These two gates at the opposite end of the room infinitely spawn pit drones, which sounds really bad, until you figure out that each spawner pauses if there's three pit drones still active from each respective spawner. So you can use that to your advantage to make it to the lever and close the gate. All right, are we done here? Oh my God. Oh shit, they got babies. Corporal? Yep, yeah, I saw that. Whoa, hey, how did you guys manage to get that guy all tied up like that? Gee, man, you see this shit? Oh man, it looks like this green shit is starting to engulf the facility, even blocking our path if we wanted to return to the other end of Black Mesa. Maybe it's not that bad of an idea to set off a nuke in the basement just in case. Adrian finally meets with some of the remaining HECU grunts to make one final stand against the Black Ops soldiers along his fellow comrades. One that ends in uncertainty because I have no idea where my men went. Is that a guy on a mortar? Yep, I think he saw me. the mortar field, but we're pinned down by a group of black ops. We'll open the bunker door, but you better get over here quick. You know, when I was in boot camp, I was under the impression that I'd be using these radios to call for support, but it feels like I'm the fucker who's being summoned for support. Well, wait, what are the Vorts doing here? Is Zen still trying to send their forces in? I thought they were busy with Gordon. Hey, remember when he had to use the turret to bust open that door near the end of Half-Life 1? Why are these proto antlions so fucking tanky? Nope. Oh my god, no, this is way worse than dealing with Black Ops. I have had nightmares like this. Please end my suffering right now. It feels like the many are about to assimilate me. Now, now don't hurt me, and I'll tell you a secret. I've been hiding up here listening. These Black Ops have some sort of bomb. I think they're planning on blowing up the base. No, no, why do you think they would do such a thing? Gee, Yotas, I fucking wonder. It's okay, buddy, I found the bomb. Honestly, I don't know why I'm turning this off, but I guess Half-Life protagonists just aren't allowed to die. Honestly, I kind of wish my satchel charge set it off, even though I know that's not how nukes work. Whatever. Our old secret admirer is here to right our wrongs. Hey, remember what I said about that last stand against the Black Ops? I kind of lied. This room used to give me a lot of troubles until I realized I could just snipe them all. Oh, why are the walls so goddamn loud? This arena also used to pierce my taint. I would always just run past the dueling factions, but this time I... Yeah, that wasn't too bad, actually. I guess you're a good guy, Corporal. Listen, 
You've got to get down below. There's something coming through, and it's the nastiest looking thing yet. Some of your buddies went down there a while ago, and I haven't seen them since. I've got some weapons I've piled up in here. You better take as much as you can carry, because I think... Good luck, Corporal. Spoiler alert, this Barney is overreacting because you don't need half of this shit for what's coming. The Gene Worm, ground zeroes for the Racex invasion, whose portal to this earthly realm terraforms our world into its own and whatever the Racex needs to survive. And that's probably the best thing I could say about this guy. This thing makes the Nihilant feel fun. You gotta use these mounted turrets to fire at each of its eyes, and once it's blinded, open fire on the big fuck me light in its belly until you hear him scream. set up a satchel charge for where he spawns his shock trooper, heal at the zen pond conveniently found outside of the boss arena because the boss poses no threat once you're not in his arena, despite it literally rewriting the code of our world. That pool, by the way, heals 3 HP per tick instead of the usual one. Lather, rinse, repeat until dead, but oh no, it's okay guys, he breaks the bridge at one point so you gotta use the grapple to get across. Wow, look at this innovative boss design. Thanks Randall. Speaking of, you know that Randy Pitchford was gonna pull an icon of sin on this guy and originally have the, to win the game, you must kill me, Randall Pitchford, except played backwards when this guy spawned. Yeah, that almost happened. Adrian slays the gene worm, and before we could see the fruits of our labor, Adrian is pulled out by the G-Man, apologizing for not approaching him sooner, but before he does, he detonates the nuke that he primed, erasing Black Mesa from the map entirely. The biggest embarrassment has been Black Mesa facility, but I think that's finally taken care of itself. So. Now this is typically the part in a Half-Life game where we're put in stasis by the G-Man after agreeing to help him, but Adrian isn't so cordial, instead being detained by the G-Man, being more of a liability to the maybe Cholulathoi than Gordon was. Or perhaps his feats warrant a stronger fist from G-Man than Gordon did? Whatever the case, it's a sudden end on a one-off hero. This is the last that we see of Adrian for the foreseeable future. I mean, he almost returned in the cancelled Half-Life spin-off Return to Ravenholm, produced by Arcane of All Studios, the team that would go on to make Dishonored and Prey 2017, and was originally headed by motherfucking Warren Spector of all people, the father of the immersive sim. Man, I, I feel genuinely bad for the team working on this because Valve decided to shelve this, as well as every other third-party game that was being made for the Half-Life IP, for what felt like no reason. They weren't told why. It just seems like Shepard's Tale was never meant to be following opposing force, and it's up to Valve to ensure that Adrian's fate isn't left to rot with Hunt Down the Freeman. Unfortunately, we all know that won't be the case. Mm -hmm.